I've never been particularly fond of the way that lav mic systems sound, despite trying a variety of different models and systems from different producers. But alas, I still find that it requires quite a bit of manipulation and tweaking surgical EQ to get it sounding uh, at least passable and hopefully usable. And you know what? I've got it down to a fine art. So here are my tips for improving your lav mic audio in any video or audio editing software. And I'll show you how I went from this. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. To this. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. Do this, we shall. I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bits you want, no problem at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers, so it would really mean the world to me if you could just take a second to hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel, puts a smile on my face, and I really appreciate it in advance. Thank you. This video is unsponsored, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. The idea with Patreon is any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel and I give the gear to my backers. Like right now, for example, I have three giveaways running at the time of filming of a total of $800, I think, worth of gear. There's a lav system, the Hollyland Lark M2. There's a, a chip on board light and a lens. And a, a Viltrox lens so you know do get down below and check that out it's a brilliant way to support the channel plus you can win some cool stuff onward this video was actually a viewer's suggestion so thank you, you uh, username Jonathan Castro got Jonathan Castro sorry if I butchered that um, but I do appreciate it I thought it was a great idea and I was more than happy to oblige the rest of you you know suggestions down there I read your comments to me, there are a couple of fundamental problems with the audio you get from lav systems. There's a reason they don't always sound natural. And the first one being, you know, we don't usually hear people's voices by putting our ears next to their chest, you know, do we? Usually it's a combination of hearing the chest, the throat and the mouth from a distance. That's what we usually hear. So I feel like it's no surprise when, you know, you get wonky sounding frequency responses from these, you know, small lav mics. I also feel like as creators, we, we often expect a lot from these, often too much from what is essentially a minuscule capsule, you know, the actual component that picks up sound waves, you know. They're often, um, they're, due to being tiny, they often have not great signal to noise ratios and not the best in terms of um, the SPLs, the sound pressure level that they can take. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great for what it is. And um, you know, I'll link that below if you want to check out that review. But the, this transmitter weighs nine grams. And like I said, these have minuscule capsules and they're not usually associated with capturing high quality audio. That's why I find the sound to be unnatural sounding, the frequencies to be slightly wonky, and why I think this audio requires quite a bit of tweaking and polishing. So let's do that now. Okay, so here we are in Logic. It's just my DAW of choice. It doesn't really matter which one you use. As for the plugins, I'm using all either stock or free plugins, except for one paid one, which can be replaced. And that's my limiter at the end. Let's just have a recap of how this sounds. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. Not bad, but definitely not great either. There's a lot that we can do to improve this. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up a linear EQ. I like linear phase EQs these days, and all I'm doing is removing a little bit of the kind of tubby sub bass frequencies. The reason I'm using linear phase EQ is because, like the name suggests, it doesn't mess with the phase of your signal, whereas a normal EQ will do that. Some of you might say, well, you know, it doesn't really matter because it's not as if you've got a gigantic mix where, you know, you've got different 
instruments clashing and that kind of thing and you know phase relationships are really important it's just a vocal track but i think this is just a good habit to get into and that's why i've switched over to linear phase completely so i've cut frequencies at around 30 hertz i definitely don't need those and then i've added a shelf just for a bit more of a gentle roll off of the low frequencies from about 100 hertz down all of these steps are just going to massage this to make it sound subtly better at each stage Moving on, and we've got our first third-party plugin, and this is TDR Nova, one that I've recommended in the past. It's free, it's a parallel dynamic EQ, meaning it will selectively reduce certain frequencies of your choice, depending on the volume of the signal. And I'm using it in its most typical way, in this case, as a de -esser. Switching on, you can see it's taking out frequencies around 5.7K. That tends to be quite a sibilant area for my voice. So let me show you these two EQ tweaks before and after before. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. And then with these two. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. Subtle improvements. Next, you can see looking at the wave, you can see it's quite imbalanced. There are bits that are too quiet. There are bits that are too loud. So I'm reaching for a basic compressor. And this is just the vintage VCA that's built into to logic you can use any compressor for this i quite like this one when you want to keep things super clean i don't want to impart any kind of saturation or any kind of sound from the compressor which some software compressors do and then i want it to be knocking off less than 5 db i've got the attack fairly fast because i don't want to necessarily kill any of the transients i just want to fatten up all of those nuances and it sounds like this before so you can see i've just switched to a lav system this is the holly Land Lark M2 after. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. A little bit fatter, a little bit of a volume jump. It's good. Next, we're doing something super clever and we're going to use the match EQ function within Logic. And yeah, this is a built-in plugin and it's really quite cool. The first thing I'm going to do is have it learn this clip to see what kind of frequencies it's getting. And then I'm going to drop in a reference track. And the one I'm gonna choose is just from basically any of my recent videos where I'm using my full fat rig. You know, my nice tube microphone into my high-end uh, preamp EQ and compressor hardware unit. It's just gonna sound great. So it's just analyzing it now. And there we have a nice EQ curve. And then when I click on the EQ curve tab and click match, it's gonna give us this. And this is what is needed to make these two clips sound more similar. The one thing I like to do is actually decrease the smoothing because I want this to be quite an intricate curve. I also want to do a little bit of fading extremes because, you know, that uh, that bump up at 20k is quite extreme. Let's hear what this sounds like before and after. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. And then with... So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. Dear Lord, that's made an amazing difference. I love this Match EQ plugin. It's superb. So let's continue with the polishing. And next I've got this. This is a fairly new EQ plugin that was added to Logic. And um, it's quite unique because, yes, it's just a basic graphic EQ. Uh, and that doesn't normally excite me. However, this is based on an API, uh, if you know, they make quite high-end hardware uh, EQs and preamps and that kind of thing and we can tune it check this out so if I pull this up we can tune the frequencies and look 32,000 Hertz that's really cool so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump that up to its highest and sure you're probably thinking you know most people can't even hear that high however these EQs do have a kind of harmonic ripple effect and this will help with intelligibility it's the kind of thing where you sort of hear it but you don't and um, this can make a really nice difference it's gonna be super subtle but here we are before and after so you can see I've just switched to a lav system this is the Hollyland Lark M2 system which I reviewed recently it's actually great so you can see I've just switched to a lav system this is 
is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. Fairly subtle. I actually might back this down a little bit. And then finally, we have my limiter. And I'm using FGX from Slate Digital. It's one that I've been using forever. And all this is doing is bringing the total volume to what I would consider a usable level. So I'm adding a little bit of gain. I don't want it to be touching the limit at all. I don't want it to be doing any kind of compression. And this is what it's doing. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. As you saw, there were just a couple of times that it touched the limiter and that's that's fine. It's not gonna be a harsh sounding clipping sound or anything like that. I'm hitting the target volume. This is a uh, loudness units full scale of around minus 13 dB, minus 14, I should say. And this is gonna be a good level. This is gonna translate really well to YouTube or whichever platform you're publishing to. And that is it. Let's show you the before and after once again. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. So you can see I've just switched to a lav system. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 system, which I reviewed recently. It's actually great. It sounds way fatter, way more crisp, way more balanced. And honestly, it sounds more like a condenser mic. I would say you could simplify this chain. The two that I would definitely keep would be our compressor and our match EQ. These two are doing the heavy lifting here. Okay, now let's take everything in this video, grind it up and make a delicious espresso of tips to take away. So I started with an instance of EQ and remember I recommend linear phase EQ for this and all I'm doing is just cleaning up that bottom end because it's not needed. Then I'm applying a dynamic EQ and this is simply for a de -esser. This is gonna make it more pleasant for people to listen to. Then I'm going to a compressor. I think compression is almost always necessary for vocal tracks because it's just so dynamic. Then I'm using the incredible match EQ and you can just sculpt your own EQ code but I really like this technique. It gets me closer to that condenser mic sound that I like. Then I'm using an airband EQ, that 32 kilohertz. I know it's super high, but I do find that it helps with intelligibility and doesn't add any kind of harshness. Finally, I'm using a limiter and that's simply to achieve the correct output level for whichever platform I'm publishing to. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. What did I miss? Do you agree? Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And um, like I said, I'm down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which Google's algorithm has chosen this one for you to watch next. So, you know, you better do what you're told. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.